This time last year, I was on a flight home from Michigan, and I've been teaching there. So I struck up a conversation with my seatmate, and I began to ask, you know, what he was doing, and he was on his way to Malaysia. This was like first hour of 35 hours of flying. So I asked all kinds of questions about his business and his life, and then I began to ask questions about Grand Haven, Michigan. That was my first time in that area. Beautiful. But he grew up there, so I just kept asking him all about Grand Haven, Michigan. And then I just simply shifted with a question. I just keep wanting you to understand that this is not that hard. Start by showing interest in people. Ask them questions. Almost everyone loves to talk about themselves. And then just shift. Try to sound as casual as you can. Hey, you got any thoughts about God? Hey, did you grow up going to church at all? So I did the grow up going to church. Hey, did you grow up going to church at all? And he said, yes, he grew up Roman Catholic. His whole life faithfully went to the Catholic mass, did Catholic school all the way through high school. I'm just listening. I don't make any comment. He says, but recently my wife has led us to a Protestant church and they're going through preaching and teaching through the book of Matthew. I'm like, yay. Still just being quiet, but thinking, oh, this is good. Now you would be hearing about Jesus, who he is, what he did. Wonderful. And he actually loves his pastor. He's like, oh, man, I love our pastor. He goes to Israel every year. He's very smart. He explains everything so well and scientifically. But then I didn't think, oh, good, he's probably good to go then. I used my favorite question. I said, so if, if this plane crashed and we died and we stood before God, which we would, that's what the Bible teaches, immediately, and he said to you, why should I let you into my heaven? You guys, that is my favorite, favorite it just cuts to the chase. It will bubble to the surface what they're actually trusting in. What they say next is going to tell you exactly what they believe. You're either going to hear, well, I try to be good, or I try to keep the Ten Commandments. I try to treat people the way I would want to be treated. One of my favorite answers to that good thing, I'll say, did you know that good people go to hell? That gets them. Well, then who goes to heaven? Well, let me tell you. But anyway, this guy, when I said, so what would you say? And he said, wow, that's a hard question. I don't know. It's kind of a mystery. You guys, we've been using the word mystery in this message, but let me make something clear. It is a mystery to us how the sovereign electing grace of God and people being called and responsible to respond to the free offer of the gospel can both be true. That's a mystery to us. It is no longer a mystery as to how you can be saved and right with God. God isn't make, has not made that confusing. It's never been more understandable and simple. So I shared the gospel then. I said, Jesus came into this world, took on flesh, and is the only one who ever perfectly kept the Ten Commandments, lived a perfect life. And yet that perfect God man, he was fully God, fully man, willingly gave up his, that was no accident that he went to the cross. When they crucified him, God placed all of our sins on him as if they were his. God poured out his wrath against sin on his son so that now anyone who believes in him and puts their trust in him can be forgiven and can know that they're going to heaven. And he unbuckled and fell to his knees. No, he didn't. I've never had that happen. But here's what's so cool, right? Not my problem. I was obedient, right? I don't have to say, oh, how do I get him to pray a prayer? Like, would you pray the prayer now, please? I'd feel better before I get off. It would seem like a win. I'm gonna trust God, because you think about it. How many of you got saved the first time you heard the gospel? You heard it, and you're like, well, yeah. You heard it. You heard it. You went to a funeral. You had a coffee conversation with a friend. I'm just doing my part. I shared the gospel, and then I said, I'd love to give you this. I gave him my favorite track, Ultimate Questions. And I said, would you read this? He'd already declared he was going to watch endless movies. I said, in your next 34 hours, would you take one of them to read this? That's it. God is saving people today. Oh, but hang on. God is using his people to share the good news of the gospel. In Romans 10, he said, how shall they? No, without a preacher. And you, it doesn't mean clergy, collar backwards, went to seminary. You're a preacher. That word simply means to proclaim. And it can be as simple, you guys, as sometimes all I'll do is like Tuesday night at our Bible study. Do you realize what you're doing? You're just running the flag up the flagpole. So we're like, oh, does anybody still believe the Bible? Just look for an opportunity to say something that they realize, huh, are you a Christian? Look for opportunities to start gospel conversations because he wants to use us to get the good news to other lost people who must hear it 
and must believe and put their hope in Jesus or they will not be saved. God wants to use us.